All right. Um, hi, I'm Alex uh, from a company called uh, GameCheck, and we're moving to Godot, as it says here. All right. <laughs> this yeah. is the. This is the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. That's it. Thank you. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna talk a bit about the company, but just a short while. So um, uh, we um, uh, made our first game. Uh, as, as a company in uh, July 2017. It was called All You Can Eat. It got a lot of uh, awards and recognition. Uh, it's available on Steam. Um, before that, I was working in uh, um, another company, but just like an employee. And uh, uh, we made uh, a lot of games. This is maybe uh, <laughs> the only, <laughs> the most famous one, like uh, Victor. It's also on Steam. Uh, it's a point and click adventure. Uh, the latest game we made in this company uh, uh, that we have right now is uh, Vape Escape. It was out on uh, Humble Bundle in November. Uh, it's gonna be out now on Steam soon. So, uh, and it was like a Humble original, so it's a cool thing. And uh, now we got some investments and so on. So we have the next project, which is going to be a bit bigger, which is uh, uh, on the slide after this one. We're also making a, uh, I'll show you, okay. This one, uh, this is a Trip the Arc Fantastic. Nice one. Thanks. So uh, uh, this game is uh, going to take a bit longer to develop, so it's, uh, it's a longer period. And, and for this game, actually, we're uh, transitioning to Godot language, okay? Which is the topic of the whole uh, lecture. Uh, because uh, I'll explain why and uh, what, it bu what is bugging us and uh, why we're transitioning so on. But just for the last slide that I skipped, yeah, when we're also making arcade games and arcade machines, so this is our machine actually that we built. We have a um, CNC cutter in our office, and we cut this stuff on ourselves and put the put the uh, our Arduino inside, and uh, pl uh, our games are playable on the on the uh, in various cafes in Croatia. We're from Croatia, yeah. And this game that's uh, that you can see here, it's actually available on Google Play as well since February. Okay, so whatever, enough about the company. So this, uh, so we, we, for all the games before, we used the Game Maker Studio. Uh, Game Maker Studio was like, uh, uh, it's a proprietary engine. Uh, uh, we use it because it's very good for 2D stuff. Uh, it was, it, you can prototype real quick. Um, when we need to like export to Android, it costs like $100 once and then we're done, which is not that big of a deal. Um, it's a very simple language, the community is large, and they have a lot of uh, plugins for like uh, AdMob or whatever you need, Steam uh, and so on. So we use that uh, f until like now, uh, and we're using it for the current game. But uh, for our next project, which is starting now, we're not. Why? Because, uh, because in August uh, 2018, uh, GameMaker Studio, uh, was uh, the support for it was dropped because uh, the company uh, transitions to Game Maker Studio 2 uh, and we uh, had to move to it because uh, we got a new employee and uh, she uh, she was a programmer and she couldn't download the <laughs> the, f the first edition of the language the engine anymore because uh, they put it down from the internet and uh, so we all had to like as a company migrate to another engine which isn't uh, very well documented uh, like the last one and uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, IDE issues, and if I had my laptop connected, I would show you, but it's just like, it's not in a good state right now. And of course, uh, uh, there are financial issues, so we paid for all the exports, and now we have to pay for them all again, because this is the company policy, like, ah, oh, it's a new engine, it's called GameMaker 2, so now you have to buy it all over again. So we said, nah. We said, okay, let's find something that's not gonna <laughs> do this to us every couple of years. And uh, so we found this uh, engine called Godot, uh, uh, and uh, the investors who are investing in this uh, upcoming uh, project, the games, um, it was really interesting to them because open source is always like long term, more sustainable and sounds good. Uh, the community seems great. Uh, I asked uh, some questions on Discord and I was like, uh, there were some trolls, but there were also very professional people who explained stuff really quickly. So that's great. Uh, and it, it has great potential, you know, it's very, very fastly growing and so on. And the, the roadmap is very transparent, so I can see if something is missing that I think is very important. I can see, okay, so it's 
here down the road, sometime in Godot 4, it's going to be implemented. That's important and so on. So all of these things are good. Um, the next slide is about uh, uh, ah, about the testing of performance. So when you have like a company which is like small or medium sized or big, it doesn't matter. Ours is let's say small. Um, it's still like a big thing to like migrate your entire company to another engine without at least trying to like figure out whether it's going to work. So we uh, we tried to make a little bit of uh, performance testing to see if it's uh, uh, it's viable, you know, if, if it's not going to be uh, problematic for some reason, you know. So we made two tests. Um, one was for uh, CPU and one was for GPU. I I'll just skim through the tests quickly. We made them in uh, Godot 3.1, uh, beta 3, if that means something to someone, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, we made them in the both uh, versions of our previous, uh, previously used language, the Game Maker Studio, and also in Unity, the newest Unity uh, branch. Yeah, the all n not the newest, but quite new. Uh, we didn't do it for Unreal because all of our games are 2D and are going to be 2D for quite some time. Uh, so we just skipped Unreal for this uh, testing. Uh, okay, so the first test was um, okay. The tests were made on a lot of computers by employees, friends, and so on. Uh, but this is my computer, so laptop, actually. Um, <laughs> just to figure out uh, when you get the numbers, it's for something like this. This is something like a uh, uh, normal gaming computer for some gamer out there who would play our games, I guess. All right. Um, so the first test is uh, the instance spawning. So we wanted to check if like CPU would, uh, OK, this is a bit to the left, but I'll, I'll read it. Don't worry. Um, so we have made two objects. The black one is the spawner object. Each frame it creates like a lot of uh, bullet objects, and the red ones are obviously bullet objects. And uh, all they do is just move in some direction at some speed, random, and uh, rotate slowly. Um, the point is to see when the uh, when the project would freeze after how many instances, you know, for which engine. So these are the these are the results, you know. Uh, so the old Game Maker Studio is really close to the metal. It's really uh, connected to the CPU, so it, it has like 20,000 instances. But uh, if, if you can see, like uh, their new uh, uh, bad version is like uh, 6,000 instances, so like more than 10 times worse. Godot is around 7,000 instances. Unity is pretty good at 15,000. So uh, this is uh, something that maybe should worry some people who are making something like bullet hell games, you know, games with a lot of instances at the same time. It probably won't affect us because we're making story-driven, single-player adventure role-playing games, so it's not a problem, probably. But it's something to keep in mind, you know, and to think about. Uh, and the second test was more GPU-based, maybe more interesting to us. So we took the assets from, uh, from Victor, the game uh, I used before, and we, like, dumped a lot of them on the screen, like 30 different animations, uh, uh, large-ish ones, uh, 50 small pictures, and five uh, big backgrounds on, on the screen in different engines. And uh, we checked the GPU, how, 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 um, how much of the GPU was used and how much was uh, left free. You know, uh, I'll check the results right now. Um, so. The FPS, this is not like the frames per second, like 60 frames per second kept. We just let it run at any kind of frames that it can go. If, if the CPU can run at 2,000 frames, we let it run uh, to see what happens, you know? Um, so uh, for Unity, we couldn't do it for some reason. But, uh, but as you can see, it's 300 FPS average, which is still a lot over 60 FPS, you know? But, but uh, our previous language was quite better at this, like 10 times almost. Uh, so this is something that uh, might be a problem. Uh, and we figured out why it's a problem, I think. It's because of the uh, graphics, uh, how, how the graphic processor takes the, takes the sprites. It doesn't batch them into uh, Atlas. It just sends them one by one, which might be a problem. But then again, it soon won't be when Godot transitions to Vulkan and so on. Uh, but it's something that we wanted to test before like switching over. And, uh, and also, it's interesting to see how many, how much percent of the GPU is actually used during this. So it, it uses a lot of GPU, which isn't like uh, um, confusing because if if it has to make like a hundred uh, calls to the GPU for every sprite that it draws, of course, it's going to uh, overclock it a bit. 
uh, not overclock it, but use a lot of percentage, you know? Uh, and okay, so this is just like real data that we used across very different uh, computers. Uh, some computers had this issue that uh, they didn't have, like older computers, older laptops and so on, uh, with integrated graphic cards, they couldn't uh, play the Godot games because uh, uh, because Godot engine now uses uh, uh, OpenGL 2 or 3. And for example, this laptop was OpenGL 1.1. 1 .1. So, so wow. this is, this real old, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, okay, so this is something to keep in mind, but there's like some statistics for gamers and not a lot of gamers use such old software and hardware, so okay, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Um, but these are all things that you have to consider when you're a company and you have to like migrate, okay, so we're gonna lose some people from Kazakhstan who are like <laughs> still on this laptop, all right? Um, so these are our conclusions. So our potential problems might be uh, if someone has an older configuration, we, we would have to optimize for it in some situations. Probably not for our games, but maybe in some more action-packed games. Uh, we might get some lower FPS, like some drops at certain situations in the game regarding CPU or GPU. Um, and certain Atlas management stuff that we could tool ourselves because it's open source and we could do it ourselves, but we would have to do it sometimes because otherwise some uh, worse graphic cards would not be able to handle a lot of sprites on the same screen. So these are our conclusions that, that are really worrying us. And uh, these are the solutions that we think uh, are parts of this. So one, one solution is of course not use GD script, use, uh, use GD native, okay? Um, on, it's not really optimizing, but like using uh, code smarter, making smarter node management. So when you know, or you can like think that this might be a problem, you know, because there's a lot of sprites or there's a lot of like action going on, just code it a little bit more smarter. And we should definitely uh, either wait for Vulkan or build some tools to, to manage atlases and put them in uh, like batches. Or what one guy said on Discord, lol, just get a better GPU. <laughs> uh, this was really helpful. <laughs> Is this guy here actually? <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, uh, and that's it, all right. So uh, I, the point of this talk was to be a, a, like less of a fanboy and more of a realistic person who was like actually uh, wants to migrate to this new software. But these are some things that like worry me. So I'm uh, hoping that people will have some information and like questions and maybe uh, like rebuttals to certain things that we said. Uh, we have all these uh, tests in all the different uh, engines, so we can like share them and people can run them on their own builds to check them out that we didn't like do some errors or something. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was code based. Uh, Can you repeat the question for the last one? Uh, okay. So the guy asked if uh, uh, it was uh, more based on, uh, again, on code or GPU, you asked? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the bullet hell uh, example, the first, uh, the first performance test. Um, I'm guessing, Pete, it's more like based on GD script. It's just GD script. GD script yeah. Uh, uh, of course, that's why it would be much faster if we do it in native. But we didn't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, that's something we should also try and see what how much of a difference it makes. You know. Yeah. So he says that we could use techniques not to process each frame and so on. Yes. Uh, which is all true, but the point of the performance test is to literally do something without any optimization and see if the engine is uh, capable of doing this, yeah. So uh, it was just without thought, just build it with five lines of code, just a for loop that makes instances and let's see if, if the engine can do it, you know? If yeah, sure. Yeah, 
I'm kind of missing the point here. Uh, according to your performance results, uh, Unity was performing not that bad compared to uh, to Godot. So what drove your choice using Godot instead? All right, uh, that's actually the most important part, and it might be that I just missed it. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, what uh, what made us actually uh, uh, go to Godot in the first place was that. Uh, we were all already uh, working on a proprietary software, and uh, we got, uh, what's the nice word for it? All right, so we, uh, we had a bad experience, you know, because uh, uh, they were bought over by a gambling company or whatever, and they said, okay, let's make more money, let's make a new one. Um, and uh, we like made a list of stuff that we don't want our, uh, our company to uh, experience ever again, you know. We don't want to not know what the roadmap is. We don't want to like uh, uh, not know when something is going to be implemented or dropped and stuff like that, you know, in the far future. We don't want uh, things to be uh, um, ever dropped, you know. So if we have some legacy code, we don't want uh, a, a new coder to not be able to like maintain it five years from now when some new console comes out. Uh, we want our old games to be on that console, why not, you know. Um, and this is why we wanted to choose uh, an open source project because it's uh, uh, because the roadmap is transparent. Uh, I it's rising uh, really great. So I think that soon it will be on the level of Unity or GameMaker or Unreal or whatever. Not right now, but what what outweighs it in this aspect is that it's it's open enough that uh, if if it, there's a problem, we could solve it ourselves. And there is no chance because of the business structure that we're going to be like uh, left uh, with. Uh, uh, a financial setback because we have to buy something else or somebody's like uh, I mean for example any company even unity uh, could go bankrupt theoretically not now but in like four or five years maybe you know and uh, it's a big risk you know and it's not like it's a theoretical risk because we're at this situation now in the company just because we had this exact same situation with an engine that I've been using uh, since 2004 so it's, it's, it's something that I thought was never going to happen. And then now it, it's like you have to transition to something that's uh, not good. So, uh, so we decided we want to go to something that's open source that's never going to uh, have this transition problems, you know. Even if the community decides to go in a different direction, it's all still here. We can still use, I don't know, GDescript if they decide to go to, I don't know, Java or something. It's a stupid example, but. And if that's it. All right, thanks you. Thank you lots.